ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Lewis from the Health and Wellness Sport. Now, we have had so many conversations about healthy living, about uh, foods and diets, about lifestyle modifications. And every time I receive positive uh, uh, communication or feedback from you, about how these things are changing your lives. But one of the things that most people have refused to grow up from is this issue of cholesterol. Now, this uh, video is intended to reach out to that gentleman or that lady who has just been diagnosed of high cholesterol levels. And this is basically uh, high LDL, the one that they refer to as the bad cholesterol. Okay, I realize most of the times I get an encounter with somebody who is hypertensive, who has a risk of heart attack and a stroke, they are uh, always on drugs to lower cholesterol. And they have been told or they have been convinced that cholesterol is the enemy and when the cholesterol levels go up, they will end up having more problems. But the problem is nobody explains to you where this cholesterol is coming from. Nobody also explains to you what is the other role of this cholesterol in your system. So this video is intentionally uh, designed to help you open up your head or your mind about cholesterol. Now this is the point. Cholesterol is actually a raw material that the body uses to fix different things in your system. It is a raw material. So you blaming the raw material for being high in the system instead of blaming what actually caused an upsurge of cholesterol in the system is actually misgu misguided or misleading. Listen to this. So you bring in cholesterol through diets, but did you know that only about 15 to 25% of the cholesterol that you're getting in your system is the one that is coming from the diets? Did you know that? Did you know that your liver makes cholesterol regardless of what you've eaten? If you eat the foods that are rich in cholesterol or if you don't eat, the liver will still make this cholesterol. Are you aware of that? So the larger percentage of cholesterol, just like the uric acid that we blame for gout, is actually coming from internal, it's an intrinsic production. So the liver makes it through a process. And remember, all the foods that you eat in the mitochondria when you want to generate energy, they are converted to a substance that is called acetyl-CoA. This acetyl-CoA is the one that is fed into the Krebs cycle to go and develop different compounds to give you energy. Now, this acetyl-CoA is actually another substrate that the liver uses to end up making the cholesterol according or depending with the need of the body, the requirements of the body. So this liver makes this cholesterol. About 70% of that cholesterol that is in your system is actually made by the liver. Therefore, most of the times we focus on blaming the diets instead of actually focusing on how important this cholesterol is. Because if it wasn't important, believe me, you, the liver will not be making it. And the liver cannot make something that will actually kill you or destroy you. That is not possible. Now, listen. Cholesterol, I've just told you, it's a raw material. So the body and the liver uses it to make different things. Number one, your brain cells are actually 80% cholesterol. Therefore, it's very necessary that you have cholesterol. Your skin cells, all your cells in the body are actually covered by a lipid bilayer. That lipid bilayer is actually cholesterol. So you need cholesterol for your formation of your cells and also to help your cells survive. Because if you don't have that cell membrane, of course, you'll end up having a destruction of these cells. Again, cholesterol is involved information of vitamin d and if you know vitamin d is actually part of your immunity this a vitamin that actually helps you fight diseases the viruses and all these things that invade your body so vitamin d is very necessary also it helps you in bone development so it's the one that is responsible for strengthening the bone so if you have a deficiency in vitamin d you will end up having problems with weak bones osteomalacia and you will end up having a very low immunity but also to continue adding on that, when we mentioned about the brain, we cannot forget to mention about the nerves. Remember this, that nerves that supply your body, because your body operates under a nervous supply. So those neurons that supply different areas of the body are covered with that, an insulator okay, that is called myelination. So that myelination is basically cholesterol. And you know very well that if your nerves are insulated, these nerves that are insulated, of course, not all nerves are insulated, but those ones that are myelinated, those are the ones that transport impulses very fast and at a higher rate, okay? 
So we need cholesterol to make sure that these nerves are sustained and nervous impulses are very quick and therefore the communication between the body and the brain is perfect. So that's another function. Another function for cholesterol is cholesterol is used to make sex hormones. These are the estrogens. These are the progesterones. These are the testosterone in men. Now remember, if you don't have this cholesterol, you will end up having a deficiency in these hormones. And we'll talk about the side effects of drugs that are actually used to lower cholesterol so that you get to understand where we are starting from because we cannot talk about the side effects without telling you the basis of where these side effects are coming from. Okay, So when you have low cholesterol in your system, of, of course you'll start making very limited numbers or amounts of these hormones, the estrogens, the progesterones, and the testosterone in men. And of course you know the deficiency of those hormones, what uh, comes about when you have the deficiency of those hormones. However, uh, that is a story for another day. And also we'll discuss that, uh, as I told you, on the side effects. Now, another function of cholesterol is to form other hormones. And these other hormones are what we call the steroid hormones. Even these sex cells, these sex hormones, sorry, are steroid hormones. So steroid hormones, examples of these steroid hormones are the adrenal hormones. And number one here is the cortisol. All of you know already that cortisol is the hormone that helps you fight stress. So if you have a deficiency in cholesterol, you have a deficiency in these adrenal hormones, you end up having problems with autoimmune because, again, these uh, adrenal uh, hormones are the ones that instruct the immune system to simply relax and not to target your own system. So therefore, you'll end up having uh, autoimmune conditions. You'll end up having asthma because asthma is, again, another condition that is reliant on cortisol levels. That's the reason why when you have an asthma attack, asthmatic attack, you are injected an external steroid. But when you injected an external steroid, you're actually telling us that the internal production of the steroids is actually in deficiency. Therefore, people who have asthma can also have a deficiency in cholesterol. But again, there is another hormone that is called aldosterone. Aldosterone is the hormone that instructs the kidneys to either reabsorb water and salts or to excrete water and salt. Therefore, it's a hormone that is actually uh, used by the body to maintain the blood pressure. So that when your blood pressure goes up, this one instructs the kidneys to urinate more and to reduce to, uh, to produce uh, to actually excrete more sodium ions. Also, when your blood pressure is low, it instructs the kidneys to reabsorb more of the sodium and more of the water, and then the blood volume goes up and your blood pressure is maintained. So it's a very important hormone in blood pressure regulation, and this is coming from cholesterol. Now already you're already starting to see why we have all those side effects of those. Uh, the atovastatins, the rosuvastatins, those statins, which are basically uh, the major group of drugs that are used in lowering cholesterol. There are other groups that are called fibrates, but they are not uh, most of the times used. These statins are the ones that are uh, mostly used and they are mostly indicated as the first-line drugs in lowering cholesterol. Now, listen, if you have cholesterol levels beyond 240 and you have a history of heart attack and stroke in your family and again you are exposed because you're either obese you're hypertensive and diabetic of course that's you can take a statin because at that moment in time you have a lot to fix before you even think about the cholesterol levels you have to fix the diabetes you have to now lower the blood pressure you have to reduce the risks uh, that will actually uh, predispose you to getting a stroke or a heart attack therefore that one is necessary but most of you who are on statins do not have these higher levels of cholesterol. Most of you who are on statins is just in the minds of the doctor that you are at risk of getting uh, hypertension and then the guidelines come in and now they write your prescription for atovastatin, maybe 40 milligrams or 20 milligrams or 10 milligrams every night before you go to bed. And now you start experiencing a lot of side effects. And side effect number one, of course, if it's vitamin D deficiency. So therefore, you will have a very low immunity. Start having weak bones and therefore you're prone to fractures. That is side effect number one. And now guess what? This is a way that these statin producing companies make more money from you. Because you give me a statin because I have high cholesterol levels. Instead of telling me to fix what I've been eating. Because cholesterol is actually used to fix inflammation in the system that is being caused by seed oils, by wheat products and by sugar in all forms. So simply tell me to drop this, the fruits and the honey and the sugar and its substitutes. Tell me to also drop the wheat products and tell me to drop the cooking oils and start using saturated fats. But you don't tell me that. But now you go ahead and tell me continue eating what you've been eating and I have a drug for you to lower the aftermath of what you've been eating. Now that drug is just one drug for you to take every night, possibly for the rest of your life. 
But look at this. You take that drug, it blocks the liver from making cholesterol. Now one, it blocks a biological function. Now why do we have to stop the liver from making cholesterol? I don't understand. So now you block a biological function. Once you block a biological function, what follows is a deficiency in cholesterol. Once you have the deficiency in cholesterol, all these functions of the cholesterol that the cholesterol plays in your body start to be uh, diminished or limited. So now you end up getting vitamin D deficiency, therefore low immunity. And guess what? We are going to take you back to the big pharma for the antibiotics therapy, for drugs, for all these conditions that come as a result of a low immunity. Those are the opportunistic infections. Number two, the same same vitamin D deficiency will lead you into weak bones and you get those fractures. And guess what is going to happen? We're going to write you another prescription for uh, vitamin D3 suppl uh, supplements and also the calcium carbonate supplements for your bones. Now, remember those drugs are coming with also different side effects, but nobody wants to talk about that, okay? Number two, most people who are on these drugs have reported memory loss. Why do we have memory loss? If you've been keen, we said that 80% of your brain cells are actually, cover, are actually made up of cholesterol. Therefore, if you don't have cholesterol, if you block the liver from making cholesterol to be used to resuscitate and make these brain cells, what do you expect? You will end up having a problem with the brain and the nervous supply. Therefore, you start losing memory. And that's just one side effect. And you know if you're using these drugs, you already know you started losing memory. But somebody tells you, no, you're doing fine, it's okay, you'd rather lose memory but lower your cholesterol because if this cholesterol continue going up, you'll end up having a heart attack or a stroke. So you'd rather have memory loss <laughs> than end up having a stroke. Now, again, on the brain and the spinal cord and nervous supply, you see those nerves that are supplied by cholesterol, that are covered in cholesterol so that they can transport or they can uh, uh, pass impulses on a faster and a more accurate rate. They are now starting to be compromised because the raw material that is supposed to make that insulator is missing or is going even down. So these drugs are actually causing you more harm than a benefit. Again, your skin starts to look very bad. You start getting muscle wasting. Okay, you start getting all these problems with your the weak muscles, the muscle wasting, the skin, uh, rough skin, and all that because cholesterol is actually playing a very important role in muscle development and in the skin function. But to make it even interesting. You have low cortisol, so your ability to even fight stress or to even maintain uh, yourself in a stressful environment goes down. Now you start getting into depression. And that's, of course, another whole load of prescription of drugs. But importantly, aldosterone, which is a blood pressure regulation uh, drug uh, hormone, when you have low cholesterol, you have low aldosterone. So what, what will come uh, as a result of that? Of course, uncontrolled blood pressures. You're either having very high blood pressures or very low blood pressures. And now imagine you're taking a drug to help you reverse issues that come with hypertension. Then you end up having hypertension or hypotension as a side effect. You don't want that, do you? Also, uh, sex hormones, the testosterone, you understand that those companies that make uh, the cholesterol-lowering drugs are the same same companies that make you sildenafil, the erection pill, the blue pill. So you can imagine they already know that when you take this drug, you'll end up having low cholesterol, you'll end up having low testosterone as a man, you'll end up having this mood and depression because testosterone is a hormone that powers a man into the life. Okay, It powers a man to go and fight better, to go and do better. But now you have low testosterone, so therefore you're getting there depressed, sitting in a certain corner and thinking about suicidal thoughts. Number two, you have low sex drive. Even in women, low sex drive. But in men, now you cannot erect. You end up having erectile dysfunction. And guess what? The same company comes down uh, three years down the line to give you a drug, a solution for what they cost. They give you sildenafil, which is a drug that was designed for pulmonary hypertension. So it is a drug that brings your blood pressure down. But now you have to take it for erection purpose. So you're, you're capitalizing on the side effects. How about this normal effect of lowering blood, blood pressure? Because it dilates blood vessels. Once it dilates blood vessels, your blood pressure goes down. And you can end up having uh, hypotension and even a common die. That's why some men have been reported uh, to have died in action. Now you understand it. Now in women, we are lowering progesterone, the fertility hormone, the happy hormone. Now the woman is so moody. You wonder when you're getting back home, your wife is always moody. And to add on top of that, your wife is on uh, hormonal contraceptives. So you see mood after mood and depression after depression. Of course, there's a drug for every one of the side effects of that drug. 
Now, when you have low progesterone, of course, low mood. When you have low estrogen, of course, there are issues that with femininity. So it's just a mess of a drug. And these are things that we see in these people, but we're not addressing them. So if you're wise, you've just realized that this video is talking about the side effects of cholesterol, but there's no way we can talk about side effects of cholesterol without taking you to where they come from. Because when you have these side effects, we have to know where are they coming from. Now, it's easier for you to handle your cholesterol levels. Simply drop the inflammatory foods, the seed oils, the wheat products, and the sugar in all forms, including fruits and honey. Go on two meals a day and basically start prolonged fasts. And then thank me later. Go again and drop that seed oil. Start using saturated fats. Eat the eggs. You are told to eat two eggs every week by your nutritionist. My friend, if you eat eggs, your liver will produce less cholesterol because you're now bringing in from outside. So it's a, it's a, basically the liver plays the role of bringing equilibrium. So when you eat more eggs, you get more cholesterol from, the, less cholesterol from the liver. If you eat less eggs, the liver produces cholesterol. This is the reason why those people who have been told to quit eggs, to quit fish, to quit the saturated fats and the cholesterol rich foods will still be put on a drug to lower cholesterol. Why? Because when you quit eating these foods, the liver now is training to even make more cholesterol because you're not bringing any from outside. So it has to balance that equilibrium. And that is a problem. Now you have to give me a drug. So you told me to quit the eggs. Then I quit the eggs. I was hoping when I quit the eggs, my cholesterol levels will go back to normal. But they are misbehaving. You're not saying anything about that. I come back to you and you tell me. Now because they are misbehaving, did you leave the eggs? I tell you, no, I'm not eating eggs. I'm not eating fish. I'm not using saturated fats. I'm using vegetable oils. Now you're thinking, huh, okay, what next? Now you give me a drug on the prescription and a drug that is supposed to block my liver from making cholesterol. Is that not criminal? So why did you tell me to quit eggs when you knew that if I quit those eggs, my cholesterol levels will still misbehave? I expected if I quit the eggs and the cholesterol-rich foods, my levels of cholesterol will stabilize. Why are they not stabilizing? Because nature is speaking to you. Nature is telling you when you're not bringing in, I will make more. And when the liver makes more, that's now a problem. So we have to give you a drug to stop the liver from making more. And then, of course, you end up becoming a slave to the big pharma because of the side effects that are coming. And each of those side effects has a drug. Look at it. Each of those side effects has a drug. That means your life is basically hooked on the food uh, on the on the food industry and on the big pharma until you go into that grave. So we will extract as much money from you as possible, but in a slowly and perfect and rap hey, a gradual rate until you die. So that money or those resources that you've accumulated over those 30 years, we are going to take them slowly by slowly by slowly. And by the time you're going to the grave, you're dying a very poor person because we've taken back what belongs to us. Be very cautious. And those are the side effects of statins.